we'd done a hard rep up the hill and were jogging back on the way down and I was bantering with one of the boys like turned round to tell him to keep up um, on the recovery and yeah I just went smack into uh, this street lamp literally as I was going to look back down the road. Hi my name is Emma Pallant Brown and this is my women's health body scan. Wow, I think it's easier to always say <laughs> what you don't love the most about your body. I would probably have to say, um, without trying to sound big headed or anything, um, probably my abs. Just because, yeah, I work out a lot. I've always been really into my core strength. Um, when I was at university, I used to run a little core session. I tend to find when I put on weight that my, yeah, my weight goes to my thighs rather than my abs. So um, yeah, flat stomach, I think I'm kind of a little bit blessed with that. I've just got to watch out for for putting on bulky muscle uh, on, on my quads. I think that's probably, my abs with a tan is my favorite bit of uh, my body. I don't actually have any tattoos, which is probably abnormal for an Ironman athlete. If you do an Ironman, you seem to have to get that Ironman tattoo on your ankle. But no, I probably would. There's one tattoo that I was so close to getting done and then I just got a little bit put off just because I'd have to have time off swimming and maybe the painful bit of the process as well. But I have a birthmark right here um, and it's in like a little diamond shape and I used to hate it when I was uh, younger because I could never wear kind of those low cut top because I was always embarrassed about it. So I wanted to change it into a little butterfly. And um, yeah, I went as far as getting the design done, I actually found the tattoo artist that I wanted to go to and then bottled out like last minute just because I had a race coming up and I couldn't be out of the water and um, not swimming. But yeah, maybe one day I've still got the design. Maybe one day I'll, I'll go and have the balls to do it. How many scars do I have? Yeah, I have quite a few. A lot from bike crashes, kind of on my knuckles, um, a nasty one on my shoulder when um, I broke my clavicle, and one on my knee from um, knee surgery when I was a runner, which is actually what got me into triathlon. I'd say the biggest scar, um, just because it's on my face, uh, my little, uh, they call it the Harry Potter scar, um, just above my eye. When I was younger and I was a runner, on a Thursday night we do hill sessions and yeah, it's dark but you have the the, um, the street lights on. On this particular night, one of these street lights wasn't on. We'd done a hard rep up the hill and were jogging back on the way down and I was bantering with one of the boys, like turned round to tell him to keep up um, on the recovery and yeah, I just went smack into uh, this street lamp, literally as I was going to look back down the road, split my my um, eye open uh, just above the brow. So it looks pretty good. It was like pretty gruesome blood spilling down my face, enough to make my coach who never cancels a session, like be like, everyone go home, um, call the ambulance. He rode with me to the hospital. Got some tidy stitches done. Thankfully my mum's a doctor. So she came and she was like, yeah, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> I always used to be a cardio girl, just love my cardio, love my running, love my cycling. And then realized actually the tone, not only to the tone, but aesthetics, like looking good and whatever, but actually feeling good about yourself and being more efficient and using the right muscles, muscles in your cardio. I realized how important the strength training is behind that. So yeah, now I'm really dedicated to my strength work. I think it also helps because if you're using the muscles that you're meant to, for example, your glutes on the run, rather than overloading the quads, then you don't get big quad muscles and you can get your cadence up and you can actually burn um, a little bit more. We, we actually do a YouTube channel where, yeah, you can follow along live to our strength and conditioning. But probably one of my favorite exercises, just because it has a mixture of everything, is leg lowers. Setting up a good position, keeping your lower back nice and flat on the floor, engaging that core, pressing down, rising your feet up nice and slowly, and then slowly lowering um, your legs down. That exercise really probably dominates through the core, but if you're switching on the glutes and the lats at the same time, you're getting that whole posterior chain, um, and with the eccentric loading, it just works that little bit um, more. So eccentric being when the muscles are lengthening as they're working, so you get the best bang for your buck. 
So recently I've been training for uh, Escape from Alcatraz. I am a professional triathlete, so it's kind of my job, it's what I do, train for triathlons, and I've been doing it since 2012. Prior to that, I was actually a professional runner. So yeah, I've been running since the age of seven. Always been pretty competitive and just love to push my body, love to get in that deep, dark place. I think though recently what's been a little bit different um, in my training up to Escape from Alcatraz has been I've increased my swim. My run is my strength and the swim is probably my weakness and Escape from Alcatraz has a slightly shorter run um, than what I'm used to but it's a really hard run so it's up, yeah, basically twice up what I want to call a cliff, probably San Fran uh, people would just call it a hill but yeah you've got one on the sand and one going up this path um, and so you go up the path, you drop down onto the beach and then you go up what's called the sand ladder. So I've been practicing my steps, um, doing some training for that run wise um, and practicing my descending as well because sometimes yeah if you're not used to running downhill when you run downhill and then you've got to do a fast flat at the end um, you can feel pretty heavy in your legs so it's just keeping that light cadence going and getting used to um, saving energy on the downhills. Yeah, so obviously uh, doing triathlon and being not the strongest swimmer, I spend a lot of time in the pool and I find that that is yeah, not the greatest on your hair with the chlorine and also your skin can get quite dry. So probably the biggest treat for me, I guess after a race or after a really hard training day when I have more of a down day, will be going and just getting a little bit of um, hydration on my skin, moisturize every morning, every night, just to keep on top of that, um, especially for the legs and the arms that are kind of getting all that exposure to the, the pool water. Just anything that helps me relax. I don't normally use massage that much just because sports massage, when I go for a sports massage, it's yeah to fix something in the muscle so it's never that relaxing I, I definitely don't count that but yeah for me a nice facial that's probably that's probably the biggest area it's something that just makes me feel good for race day is I always go and get my nails done before I love getting white gelish just they feel smooth they feel like they're not gonna have any resistance in the water. Always go for white, I think it shows off your tan a little bit more. Yeah, it just makes me feel like I'm race ready and have that little treat to sit down for 45 minutes beforehand and get them done.